Welcome to Career Services Dynamite with Tatiana and Tracy. I am Dr. Tracy Spots. And I am Tatiana Dennis. And today we are going to be introducing the concept of internships and co-ops. So we're going to talk to you today about how to get internships, why internships are important, and then we're also going to talk about the different things that go into co-ops. So we're just going to get started right away. So the first thing I want to talk about are why are internships important? So you can gain work experience. So I want you to think what better way to realize whether or not a career is right for you than to work in the field and gain experience. By completing an internship, you can get real world experience in a field that you're interested in and learn whether or not that is the right fit for you. It is important that you can create a strong relationship with your supervisor so they mentor you and ensure you are getting the most out of the opportunity. If you show that you are a strong work th- worker who grasps concepts, works well with the team, and asks important questions, then the sky's the limit. They may even offer you a job once you graduate. Develop your skills. So working in the field will help you develop both hard and soft skills. Your mentor, mentor will work with you to help hone your skills in the field and make you more marketable once you complete the internship. An internship also teaches you how to be a professional in the workplace. It is important to note that every company has their own mission and culture, and it is important that you get to know where you are working. It can be hard to change your lifestyle to a typical nine to five job, so internships help you get acclimated to what your life will be like once you graduate. Start building a professional network. So in my opinion, in today's society, you're either a viral sensation and TikTok star, or it is who you know in the industry you're interested in working with. Once you get the internship, you can turn your coworkers and supervisors into your mentors that can help you throughout your entire career. Don't be scared to ask your mentors for advice when applying for full-time positions. Remember, they have been where you are. Test industry knowledge. Yes, it is important to go to class and learn everything about your chosen career field, but it is also important to get practical experience. That is where internships come into play. It helps you determine your interests. So are you one of those students has changed their major like seven times in the span of a few years? That is okay. But try your hand at internships in the different fields so you can find something that piques your interest and that you can see yourself doing for the rest of your life. Allows you to learn in a safe environment. Are you scared senseless to start your career off when you graduate? No problem. Try out internships in different areas to see what really piques your interest. You can work into different internships without fear because they understand you're here to learn and to be a sponge. Sometimes you even get paid to learn. Every once in a while, you will get lucky and land a paid internship. This gives you an opportunity to learn about your career field, get experience, and even a livable wage. And finally, it teaches you the life lesson of work-life balance. Most internships are 9 to 5 like your typical Monday through Friday gig. This allows you to learn how to balance your work life with your extracurricular activities. So now I want to talk to you a little bit about how to get an internship. So there's two there's two ways to go about getting an internship. One is to work with your faculty member in your class. So say you are taking a marketing class and you have to get an internship to fulfill your requirements before you graduate. Well, you can get reach out to us and we will help you locate an internship in the marketing field. We cannot guarantee that it'll be paid because sometimes they're not, but we will help you locate a company that will take you under their wing. The other option is if you just come here and you're like, you know what, I really have no idea what I want to do with my life, so I want to try out different things. Well, you can come see Tatiana or myself and tell us what you're interested in and then we will search for different internships in the different fields of area that, of your interest. So if you're wanting to do marketing, if you're wanting to do CIT, if you're wanting to do nursing, anything that you're interested in, all you have to do is reach out to us and we will help locate an internship for you. So Tatiana, that's all I really have to say about internships. Why don't you break it down those co-ops for us? Okay, so cooperative programs, also known as co-ops, combine academic learning with practical work experience. Students typically alternate between academic semesters and full-time work in their field of study. Um, They are designed to help you gain practical experience and prepare for future careers. Co-ops often last either a full semester or more. They may also require a commitment to work for a specific duration, which can influence your academic schedule as well. 
And you may be thinking that this sounds a lot like an internship or an apprenticeship, and that's because it is. Just like some internships and apprenticeships, co-ops allow individuals to get the work experience and they can also be paid. So most are paid providing financial support while gaining that experience. Compensation can vary depending on the industry and the location that you're in. Many co-ops offer um, academic credit, but students should verify the requirements and process for receiving credit because some programs may require additional things such as assignments or reports. Co-ops also provide that hands-on experience, um, helping you as a student to apply classroom knowledge in real-world settings. They can significantly significantly enhance your resume and job prospects uh, post-graduation. They also allow you to build professional relationships with colleagues and also industry professionals, which would allow you to network. These connections can lead to mentorship, references, and job offers. If you are someone who doesn't know where to start with networking or what it is, join us on our next podcast to learn all about networking. As a student, you can develop both technical skills relevant to your field and soft skills like teamwork and communication. It's important for you to seek feedback and actively engage in learning opportunities. So start researching and applying for those co-op positions early as many companies do uh, recruit well in advance. And this is helpful with landing a position because waiting too long or too late can cause you not to land an opportunity or not get all of the experience that you need. Another thing is to tailor your resume and cover letter to highlight relevant skills and experiences when you're applying for co-ops. As a co-op student, you must manage your time effectively, balancing work responsibilities with academic commitments. So Tracy, when you were in college, how did you uh, manage your time and balance your priorities? That's a great question. So I feel like as I get older, I'm a lot better at time management, especially like I look at how I was when I was in undergrad and in my master's program. And then when I went to get my doctorate, I used to be a massive procrastinator. Like I would wait till the last minute to do everything. I would sometimes even write a paper an hour before it was due in class. I mean, come on. I know those of you listening to this podcast, I know you've been there. But honestly, how I how I manage my time, I'm not good at a planner. I have tried so many different planners and and so many different schedules. I've even tried utilizing my online calendar. But what honestly works the best for me are just old school post-it notes and to-do lists. So that's really how I manage my time is every morning now I will come in and I will sit down and I will look at my computer and I will look at the day and I will see what do I have to get done today. And then I will just make an old fashioned to-do list. Yeah, those to-do lists are definitely helpful. You can also use a calendar, too. You, Everyone has a cell phone today, so using your calendar on your cell phone um, definitely helps as well. It's the same thing as a to-do list. Um, so next, I'm going to get into communication. So communication with your academic advisors can help in planning course schedules around your co-ops. When evaluating co-op opportunities, you should consider factors such as job responsibilities, um, company culture, and potential for growth. Look for opportunities that align with your career goals and interests. Although getting the experience is important, so is your happiness and mental health. So just like when finding a job or a career, you want to make sure that you find an opportunity that aligns with your values that will also help you grow professionally and that will will allow you to follow your passion. So to switch gears, while co-ops have many pros, there are some barriers or challenges that you may encounter. I want to talk about a couple and give some ways to overcome them. But first, Tracy, what are some barriers to internships? That's a great question. Man, you're you're on fire with the good questions today. So so looking at when I was doing the research into internships, I found a couple of barriers. So one of the ones that we want to consider is maybe a student would have a lack of experience or knowledge about the job. So, you know, when they get offered an internship, they may have no idea what they're getting themselves into. They may have no idea about the field. So just maybe doing some more research and making sure they're, you know, ready to go on day one. There's some financial implications for non-paying internships, you know, especially if you work a full-time job. Uh, which also kind of goes into play with time management. If you are a full-time student, like when I came back to school, I was 30 years old and I had a a 50-hour-a-week job and I was a full-time college student. So when I had to find an internship, I had to find one that was non-paying, but it also, I had to do it in between the hours of my real work and going to school. So it was really important that I learned how to do time management. 
Sometimes the application process can be difficult and can discourage students from applying for them. Some of these job applications out there are crazy. They want you to offer your first unborn child in order to apply to work for them. So I think it's important to teach students how to apply for jobs. Uh, lack of knowledge for the resources that students have. So, for example, students may not know that there's a career services uh, I guess, unit here at BCTC and that we're here and available and, and willing to find internships and co-ops for students. So I think just getting the word out there and, and reminding students that we're here, we're here to support. And, you know, we, we do work with companies that offer internships all the time. So as long as they come to us and have a conversation with us, we will be able to find them an internship. Perfect. Like Tracy said, use as a resource. We are here to help. So she mentioned some barriers to internships. Now I'll talk about some barriers to co-ops. Um, some barriers are time management, adjusting to professional environments, skill gaps, communication barriers, workload pressure. You might be uncertain about your future career path and financial concerns. Now, these may seem like a lot, but some advice I would give is to use tools like to-do lists, like we mentioned, or digital planners to organize tasks by urgency. Staying organized can alleviate a lot of stress. You may have to allocate specific times for work, study, and personal activities to maintain that balance. Personal activities or self-care is important to keep you balanced, so make sure that you make time for you. Also assess the skills needed for your role and focus on developing them. You can do this by taking advantage of different workshops that are offered, um, mentorship opportunities to enhance your skills as well. BCTC's Student Success Hub does offer or does have peer mentors that can help with Blackboard, navigating college, time management skills, study skills. They also help you with prepping for finals and midterms and more. You can either visit in person on the Newtown campus or email them to schedule an appointment virtually with the mentor. When it comes to communication, you can make an effort to understand others um, before responding, and this can be helpful in your everyday life. We're always communicating with others and interacting, so taking the time to understand them will help tremendously. You can also regularly ask for input on your communication style and adjust as needed. If you don't know your communication style, learn that as soon as possible. You never know when you'll be asked or when you need to know. As a co-op student, use this time to evaluate your interests and goals. Um, do this by talking to professionals in various roles to gain insights into different career paths. It's important to do your research and figure out what is a good fit for you. It's okay to not have all of the answers right away. And lastly, although I'm not a financial expert, when it comes to financial barriers, you can track your expenses and plan your finances as much as you can to avoid stress. And you can check to see if there are any scholarships specifically for students in co-op programs. So being aware of these challenges can help you to better prepare yourself and seek support when needed making your co-op experience more rewarding. Successful co-op experience can lead to job offers upon graduation. So use experience to showcase your skills and work ethic in future job applications. By understanding all that we mentioned today, you can make the most of your internships and in co-op programs and enhance your educational and professional journey. Wow. What an excellent, excellent topic that we just discussed today. Listen, y'all, I'm going to tell you one of the biggest mistakes I made going through college is not doing enough internships. I probably would have realized what I wanted to do with the rest of my life a whole heck of a lot earlier than I actually did. So please, please, please come see us. Let us help you find an internship. We're here for you. So I'm really excited for our next podcast. We'll be talking about resume writing and networking. And we're going to have a special guest, one of my good friends. Her name is Mackenzie Haynes, and she works for Awesome Inc. She's going to be joining us on the next podcast to tell us all things resume writing and networking. So that's all I have for now. Do you have anything else, Tatiana? Um, I don't have anything else. All right, perfect. Well, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.